Hello, everyone. Welcome to day five of our journey through Holy Week. Just a quick recap. Um, throughout the week, Jesus has, uh, on Sunday, he goes and he enters Jerusalem on the donkey. It's his triumphal entry. On Monday, he curses the fig tree and he cleanses the temple. On Tuesday, he goes back to the temple where his, his authority is challenged uh, by the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And then he goes on a long discourse and he preaches about the kingdom of God. And uh, he preaches about um, him being the son of God. And then uh, yesterday, uh, Jesus is anointed at Bethany by Mary and Judas goes out to betray him. And so today is typically called Monday Thursday. And this is the day that Jesus eats Passover with his disciples. We know this meal now as the Last Supper, and uh, we also know it as communion, where we break bread, eat that, and we drink the cup. Um, that represents Jesus' body and his blood. And uh, if you have an opportunity, go out and get some grape juice, get some bread, because tomorrow for our Good Friday service, which is gonna be at 7 p.m., uh, we will participate in communion, and you can do that with us. And so we would just I uh, want you to do it with us, so go out, go out and get that stuff um, if you can, and then you can uh, partake with us. We're going to be in Mark 14, starting in verse 12, and just to let you know, uh, we are going to go all the way to verse 42, so it's 30 verses, and we're going to go to the Old Testament, so it's going to be a little bit longer tonight, um, but I think it's going to be very fruitful for you, and there's going to be a lot of a teaching packed into this thing. And so we're going to start in verse number 12 of Math Mark 14. Uh, Mark 14, verse number 12. It says, And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And so now this is where I want to go to the Old Testament because I want to kind of explain what the Passover is and what they are actually celebrating right now. Uh, they are celebrating their freedom from Egypt. And so we're going to go into Exodus 12 and we're going to look at that uh, really quickly, just a couple of verses, uh, and we're going to see what they are actually celebrating. And so Exodus 12, uh, starting in verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what, what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. There's a clue. A male, there's a clue, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you'll, you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. There's another clue. Then they shall take some of the blood, another clue, and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. There are clues all throughout this that all point to Jesus. Verse number eight, they shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. In this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for, for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. This Passover points to Jesus 
dying on the cross for our sins, shedding his blood. There has to be blood spilled in order for there to be forgiveness of sins. And this all points, um, this Passover in the Old Testament that they are celebrating as a uh, freedom from slavery, freedom from the bondage of Egypt. They are now celebrating this uh, in verse num verses number 12 uh, through 25 in this text. And this is what Jesus is celebrating, but we're going to see that he's going to perfect this and he's going to point all of this to him because he is the Passover lamb. And so we're going to have a link in the description to this video. Uh, if you want to learn more about how the Passover uh, all points to Jesus, then I would highly encourage you to check out this link, read it. Uh, it will it will blow your mind most likely on how how all of this stuff um, shows that Jesus is truly the Son of God, how he truly is um, the symbolism in all of this, how it all uh, points to Christ. And so we're going to have that in the description. Please check it out. Verse number 13, it says, And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready there prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. Jesus is all knowing. Jesus knew that this man was going to be there. That was an, actually a very specific identifier for this man, that he would be carrying a jar of water because this is typically what women did in that time. And so this is specific. Jesus is definitely a prophet. He is all-knowing. He is the Son of God. And he prophesies this, and it, boom, it's right there. The disciples see this. Verse number 17. And, it was, and when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Tru Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him, One after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. And so most likely Judas was um, beside him, he was sharing the bowl with Jesus, he was dipping the bread with Jesus, and this is Jesus knew that Judas had already done what he did the night before, where he was betraying him for those 30 pieces of silver. Verse 21, For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been bore, born. This is a striking judgment against Judas, who has now rejected Jesus as the Messiah. And... Uh, and Jesus has some bold, bold words for him there. Verse number 22, uh, And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said. Now, just as no, uh, of note here, Judas most likely left um, right before this part, right after the indictment or the judgment was on him. Jesus, uh, we know in other passages, set, tells Judas to go and uh, do what he had planned to do. And so... He's now most likely eating with the other 11. Uh, and so it says, And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. Once again, he is showing that that bread that they had been celebrating for all those thousands of years really pointed to him. And he took a cup, and this is most likely the third cup, the cup of redemption, uh, which you'll find in that link. Uh, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they, dr and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is a significant event for Christianity. This is a significant event that Jesus did here, that he has now instituted a new covenant and it is in him it is not in feasts it is not in festivals it is not in sabbaths it is not in new moons anymore all of that stuff was a type and shadow of the real thing which is christ 
And he is declaring that right in this passage. He is showing that to his disciples. And now we can know that, that the new covenant has nothing to do with the works that we do or any other sacrifices that we make. It is only found in Christ. Verse number 26, and when they had sung a hymn, which is what they usually did, they sung uh, hymns from the Psalms. They went out to the Mount of Olives and Jesus said to them, you will all fall away, fall away for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Once again, he is prophesying this, scripture must be fulfilled. And so the disciples will temporarily fall away from him. Verse 28, but after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Jesus is telling them he will rise from the dead. He knows he will rise from the dead. He, he, he is so bold in this and he is so uh, convicted about this that he would say this. And I would just say to us, if a man says that he will rise from the dead and then he does rise from the dead, we should believe that man. Now you should do the research like we've talked about, see if this is actually true. And I believe the evidence points to that, that this is true, that Jesus does rise from the dead on Sunday and that he, is, he, did, he prophesied that he would do it, that he said he would do it and, and it, it came to pass. Verse number 29, Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And this is Jesus, this is Peter being prideful here and he's saying, I'm not gonna fall away. Verse 30, and Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. The reality of what was about to happen to him um, started to fall on him. He started to realize he is going to have to be beaten, arrested, uh, mocked, all of the things that are going to happen the next day, and that ultimately he would have to endure the wrath of God for our sins, uh, for all of our sins on the cross. And so he begins to be distressed and deeply troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, which, which is translated to Daddy, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And so Jesus knows that as God, God the Father, that he is all-knowing, that if there was another way, that if there was another plan, then God would know the plan and that he could provide that plan. But there was no other plan. This was the plan. This is how people had to be saved. This is how he would save me, how he would save you from our sins so that we could have a relationship with God. Verse 37, and he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking a rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And so he sees Judas coming. Um, and the thing that I want you to understand tonight is that Jesus is alone in this. Jesus, as a man, he had the disciples were going to scatter. He was going to do this alone. And he, it's because he is the way to God. He is the only way to God. And in Christ alone are we saved. And so he willingly laid his life down for us. And uh, in verse number 36, when he says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Go and read Romans 7. This is so true for us today that we are indwelt with the Holy Spirit uh, when we are saved 
He, give, he is freely given to us, and then He does war with our sinful nature. It is constantly in conflict, and we fight our sinful nature. And He tells the disciples, He says, to watch and pray. And so for us, we must be in prayer. We must be uh, trusting in God. We must be putting our faith in Him and Him alone. And we need to see that Jesus truly is the only way uh, to salvation and, and uh, to, to understand that and to really, really surrender uh, our lives to that truth. And so please join us for our Good Friday service tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, we are going to take communion. Like I said, there's going to be a little bit of worship and then there's going to be a message about Good Friday and about how Christ is the victor and how he has won the war for us. I'm going to pray for you and I pray that you have a great evening. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you alone, Jesus, did this for us, that you um, asked the Father and you said, hey, if there's any other way, please remove this cup from me. And the answer was no. And you submitted you submitted and you were obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And uh, I thank you for that tonight. I praise you for that tonight, that you have saved us, that you have laid your life down for us. And we are enemies and you still did it for us. And I thank you for that. And I pray that we would uh, be more prayerful. I pray that we would be more alert, that we would be discerning and that we would uh, be watchful. And I pray uh, that all of us would place our trust and our faith in you. And uh, if someone out there has not done that, I pray that they would seek you out. I pray that you would save them. I pray that you would make them alive and that you would show them that this is true. Reveal yourself to them in a way that only you could. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.